Hello Python programmers! Today we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. So if you do procedural programming, uh, most languages will start you out with just simple variables. And even though we're talking about a bike and a bike may have more than one property like the speed and the gear and the cadence, in most languages, you'll start out and you'll just have more than one variable that goes along with that bike. And then you just kind of remember that these all go to bike one. And if you want to print out the information about bike one, you could do a print statement where you're printing the speed and the gear and the cadence. And in procedural programming, you'll separate things into functions to make your life easier. Well, Python has object-oriented programming. Everything, starting with day one of Python, is actually dealing with classes and objects. So when I say a variable x is set to 5, well, we know 5 is an integer, but if we look in detail at the type of x, yes, it's an integer, but it's, there's a class int. Um, that is the, the type. So it's already taking what is a primitive type like int and there's a class encapsulating that. And the same thing if I say y is equal to hello world. So that is a data type that is the class string. So you define a class when you want a new data type and Python has a lot of built-in types like int and string. And then in Python, you can actually make your own data types. You can extend the language. So let's say I wanted to represent this bicycle in Python. Well, another way to do it, instead of just having three separate variables that are all um, using the int class, is I could create my own data type called bicycle. And you do that with the word class and then the name of your class, and then a colon. And then everything's indented just like with an if statement or a for loop or a while loop. So now I'm saying that there is a new data type. We're not just stuck with ints and strings and floats. There's a brand new data type called bicycle. And bicycles have a speed, a gear, and a cadence, and we'll start them out at zero unless somebody fills in another value. So if this is a possibility, then to create a new bike, I can just say bike is equal to bicycle because bicycle was the class name. And now if I check the type, we are using our brand new data type bicycle. And how do I start filling in those attribute values for my bike one? I can say my bike one speed is equal to five and my bike one gear is equal to one. You use the dot operator in between your variable name and the attribute name. Uh, so we'll try one more bike one cadence is equal to 20. And now if I want to see all of those at once, I can use the vars command and then say, show me everything about bike one. And we get to see all three of those properties that are all now part of a bicycle class. Well, classes can have more than just the attributes. They can also have the methods or the functions that go along with a bicycle or whatever the object type is. One of the most common ones would be a constructor function. Um, the constructor function and function and methods, are that's like a synonym. Some languages call them functions, some of them call them um, methods. Uh, so if I want to construct a new bicycle, instead of me having three assignment statements, which isn't bad, but there is a shorter way I could do it in one line if my bicycle class has a constructor function. So what does a constructor function look like? Um, it is a way to initialize, init is short for initialize, a new bicycle object. And if we look at the arguments to this constructor method, it takes four arguments. One is the object itself, and then it takes, we've got S, G, and C, three object or three variables that are going to be used to set the speed and the gear and the cadence. So how does this look in practice? Well, in practice, when we want to create a bicycle object, we can pass in those parentheses when we say the data type is bicycle, we can pass in our, let's pick a different um, speed and gear and cadence just so we can tell that we're looking at some changes in the object. So I'm going to say I'm passing three things into the constructor function. And you might remember that the constructor function actually looks like you're passing in four things. Well, the self 
is if you have ever dealt with Java or C++, it's like the this pointer. So the object itself is actually in this case going to be to the left of the equal sign. So the bike one object itself is going to be initialized using these three values and I'll double check my bike two, or sorry we're on bike one, I'll double check my bike one values and I see yeah these have all been used to initialize the different values um, the speed was whatever we passed in first I passed in six first so that was used to set the speed and then the gear that I, I passed in the number two that was used to set the gear to two and then the cadence I passed in 15 so we can really quickly create a whole bunch of bicycles if we want to we could create let's create a bike two in just one line of code and we could create another one a bike three so having this data about the class uh, all in one place the variables that belong to that class and the functions and the methods that go with that class um, can be really handy and that's one of the the advantages to object-oriented programming is we're extending the language we're making our new data type and we can use our these bikes bikes one bike two bike three in our programs now I think that's enough for our first object-oriented programming Python lesson so I'll stop right there